Hey everyone, welcome back. So, in my own ignorance, I've been sitting here trying to calibrate this absolute dinosaur, and uh, it gave me quite the run today. And just wanted to show you guys what I did and how to uh, calibrate the rem on these guys properly first time. <laughs> I know I did a whole other video on calibrating rem. However, uh, using an oscilloscope, uh, you have to adjust the waveform just so. And then run through your your ohms calibration. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that right now. <sighs> Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. I'm so tired. <laughs> Okay, guys, let's go ahead and take a look. So this here is a value lab force FX Charlie, even though it doesn't see right here on the on the emblem. So what we got to do is down here on the inside, there is a tiny little potentiometer right there, which has to be adjusted as the first stage before you can do your ohms calibration. And today we're going to be using the Fluke. This is the QA ES3 actually makes this calibration way easier than the way I used to do it. In my other video, I did it with a set of resistors. You can see I've got the resistors set up in the network. Here's a 10 ohm, here's a 70 ohm, and here's 135 ohm. And you're probably looking at these like, holy cow. That's right, guys. Back to electronics basics. You got a series parallel configuration. You have a parallel configuration. You have a single uh, resistor here. That's how you get those. But fortunately... Uh, I got this guy right here that can do it all in one, which makes it so easy. But uh, just to be sure, because I was getting some really weird readings, um, I was resorting to using 1% uh, resistors, which did not fix the problem, guys. And, you know, that's the way I'm going to work is I'll check this guy with my multimeter first. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to go with a known resistance value and see if it'll work then. But that's not how it was. So let's go ahead and let's run it through. And I'll show you guys how I calibrate this beast. Okay. So first things first, uh, you should know that you can always check the calibration values of your QA ES3. Let's go ahead and let's switch this guy over to multimeter mode and resist all. All right. What I can do is with this guy plugged into CQM and down to variable low, we can stick our multimeter leads in. And I just give them a little bit of squeeze pressure. And you can see right here, my multimeter, since it's not a fluke multimeter, it's going to stabilize very slowly, but that's okay. And I better hurry up and get this video done because you can see my batteries run low. So this guy is actually so easy and it's so nice to run through your resistance. And it doesn't have to activate. Like normally you'd set the resistance and then activate. You don't have to do that with the QA ES3. You just set it and forget it. So the first thing we gotta do, while it's plugged into the RAM, we have to go and take it here. Let's see. I've got my oscilloscope set up. And I'm going to hook my probe like so. So you got your reference, you've got your uh, probe set on one X. And I have a tiny little flat blade screwdriver. And you can see that my waveform is way off. I'm going to hit auto. So let's auto range it so that we can see a little bit better. Whoa, that's a little too small. Okay. Let's go ahead and zoom it in a little bit so y'all can see it a little better. So one of the things that we're going to focus on is the frequency. You can see that I'm shooting 79.4 uh, kilohertz. And... We're going to be shooting for around 80 kilohertz is the key. So on this little potentiometer down here, I'm going to place my flat blade screwdriver. Now, mind you, we don't want to press down on the potentiometer because that is going to change the value. So I'm just going to set it here really lightly. And let's come back to our oscilloscope. And you can see that as I, as I touch this screw, you can see how the amplitude of the waveform is changing. And that... It's generally a no-go, okay? So we're going to press recall, pure, and desiccate. We're going to go into a programming mode. So here we go. It's on OP, which normally stands for open. And our oscilloscope is currently at 79.4. So what the instruction tells us to do is to go ahead and look at our oscilloscope. And we're going to adjust the amplitude. 
and the frequency. So we want to stick around 80 kilohertz. So you can see right here, 79.7. So what I'm, I'm looking for is that amplitude to go up and down. And it will go up and down quite a bit. See, it's not really changing. See how it's going up? And it just kind of stops going up, right? And then if I keep going, see how it goes back down? So my frequency will increase and my amplitude will decrease. So what we want to do, we want to slowly twist it until the amplitude kind of stops right there. So the wave's not getting any bigger. Now we can disconnect these guys. That is all we have to do for the oscilloscope. Now we're going to hook this guy up to our CQM. And this is open. So I'm going to pull the plug. We're going to set the values for an open circuit. Now it's asking us for 10 ohms. So we're going to plug that guy back in nice and carefully. And over here, we're going to dial in 10 ohms on our QA ES3. Then I'm going to hit the up arrow, which confirms that I am at 10 ohms. It auto sequences to the next value, which is 70 ohms. So let's go ahead and let's take it up to 70. All right, so the range that our REM normally is looking for is going to be between like 8 or 9 ohms and 135 ohms is the upper range. So you can tell right now what we're doing is we're calibrating the mid value. So half of 135, 70. So here we go. So we just calibrate at 70 ohms. Now let's go ahead and take it up to 135. It's jumping around pretty fast. Okay. Baby steps. Right. Give it a couple seconds to normalize. We'll hit it. And notice it jumps to the next sequence, which tells you that our REM is done. It's good to go. So now what we got to do is now we got to test it. So I'm going to take my, my tester down to 130 ohms. We're still in programming mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this bad boy off. We're going to turn it on. It's going to go through its self-check. And hopefully it doesn't error code out because that's that would be my luck. All right, here we go. So our REM circuit right here, it's going to be looking for some sort of input at 130 ohms, showing green. So I'm going to very slowly turn it up, 131, 132, 133, 134. 135, 135 ohms. It took me so long to get that. Now the key is, is that when you are using your oscilloscope, you it, you want to go by the frequency and by the amplitude. The key is the amplitude. So you want to make sure your amplitude is at the very maximum and then stop turning it. Before I was trying to get it to 80 to 82 kilohertz, which is not the game. The game is amplitude of the wave. So get it to the highest amplitude, then go ahead and set your resistance. It kind of says that in the manual, although it really wants you to get close to 82 kilohertz. I didn't go by that. So anyway, after wrestling with it, I finally got it. So guys, if you're using a dual electrode, you're looking for 10 ohms to 135 ohms. If you're looking for a single electrode, which doesn't have the dingle hopper, then it's looking for zero to nine or ten ohms, I believe. There we go. Look at that. I plug it back in. It's showing that that is not good. Let's turn it down to 134. Unplug. Plug it back in. Oh yeah, she's she's upset. There we go. Okay. So take it down below the tolerance level and we connect it back up and we are good to go. Ram. This is the most important calibration on any ESU because that's the one thing that prevents a patient from getting burned. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.